Welcome to another episode of Resiliency Radio with Dr. Jill. Today, I have a good friend, colleague, and someone I have respected for so many years and just delighted to have Dr. Teitelbaum here. Uh, Let me introduce him and then we'll jump right in. Dr. Jacob Teitelbaum, MD, is one of the most frequently quoted post-viral chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, energy, and pain medical authorities in the world. He is the author of the best-selling From Fatigue to Fantastic, Pain Pain Free, One, Two, Three, The Complete Guide to Beating Sugar Addiction, Real Cause, Real Cure, The Fatigue and Fibromyalgia Solution, Diabetes is Optional, and the popular free smartphone app Cures A through Z. He's a lead author on eight studies on effective treatment of fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome and a study on effective treatments of autism using NAET. Dr. Teitelbaum appears often as a guest on news and talk shows national-wide, including Good Morning America, The Dr. Oz Show, Oprah, CNN, Fox News Health, and more. You can go to his website and learn more at vitality101.com and endfatigue.com. And wherever you're listening, if you're driving, we will be putting those in the show notes. So at the end, I'll repeat those and then just stay tuned because you'll be able to find those in our notes wherever you're listening. So welcome, welcome, Dr. Teitelbaum. It is a delight to have you here. Jill, it's great to be with you and with everybody who's watching or listening today. So many of you suffer from these conditions or treat people who do. And we're going to organize all that for you today and give you a really research-proven, highly effective approach to getting well. Uh, I'll also give my email at the end of the show where you can you know, get information, have some questions answered, things like that as well. So if you're ready to get well, let's do it. You know? Let's do it. And thank you again for paving the way. Let's start with your journey. How did you get into medicine? Did you always want to be a doctor? <laughs> Tell us your trajectory to get to where you are now. Yeah, people ask, what's a nice doctor like you doing in a field like natural medicine or chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia? And I got into it the old fashioned way. I had the disease. Um, I've been empathic since I was a, as long as I can remember. And I, I remember as a child, I wanted to, I was kind of quiet, really shy. I wanted to hide behind corners and just wiggle my finger and get people well who were suffering and having things. I grew up in a Auschwitz survivor community, basically. So there was a lot of healing as an empathic kid. It was kind of challenging. Um, But I knew forever back that what I wanted to do was be a healer and a teacher. Um, And to be a healer and as a good Jewish boy meant to go to med school. And, you know, everybody else was wondering what they wanted to do when they grew up. Even when I was eight, I knew what I wanted to do. Um, And in medical school, I'd been paying my own way through college and med school. My dad had died. And um, so I was working and you know, I finished college in about two and a half years because you pay by the year and not by the yeah. number of courses. So you just pay, you know, get the half price. So, and in med school, that, you know, working as a nurse was easy, paying my own way, doing the med school thing. Um, There's some other chaos that went on um, that left me emotionally, left me physically wiped. Um, I came down with a nasty viral syndrome that I call the drop dead flu. I couldn't work, which meant I was homeless and sleeping in parks. And I had to drop out of med school. I figured my life was crushed and over. Um, but it's as if the universe put a holistic homeless medical school sign on my park bench. Herbalists, naturopaths, energy workers, I was kind of taught how to use a chakra system. All these different things came by and opened this whole world that I'd never heard about in med school. Um, and through that, I learned how to recover myself, went back to med school. I spent pretty much the last 47 years researching, writing, and teaching about how to get well from these conditions because they are so treatable. Problem is not lack of effective treatment. There's just no super expensive medication so doctors don't hear about the treatment. Oh, so, so true. I love everything you said. And I'm so sorry you've had to go through that, but isn't it true that through our own journeys and suffering and illness, I've had the same thing. Um, It transforms us because we learn something that is not in any textbook. And especially as the receiver, as I say, we went from doctor to patient and then back to doctor, um, because that really gives us this insight into what's going on. So you dealt with that yourself. You started to realize there's a lot more than just allopathic medicine. I did the same. Um, <laughs> what, what a shock, isn't that? Yeah, right, like, right. Oh my God, you know. <laughs> yeah. so start us on that journey for someone listening out there, and we'll dive into specifics. But one of the things that I see, and you agreed before we even came on here, um, we've seen chronic infection 
infections, chronic viral uh, syndromes. Um, we've seen uh, toxic exposure like mold. We've seen all these kinds of things and now long COVID and they present very similarly. And as you and I look at the solutions and also the biochemical patterns, they're really the same. Like long COVID isn't anything new. It's just more prevalent because it's hit so many millions of people more than maybe a tick-borne infection. So take us through someone who's suffering from brain fog, fatigue. First of all, what does it look like to be in this like group of chronic fatigue? What they might, what might they be experiencing? And then some solutions. So basically, this is an energy crisis that trips a circuit breaker in the brain called the hypothalamus that controls sleep, your entire hormone system, and the ability to maintain blood pressure and pulse. So all of these are on the same circuit. Um, and you say, well, how do you blow a fuse? Well, you can blow a circuit breaker in your home hundreds of ways. And it can be from post-viral or post-infectious, which is about half the causes. You'll see it with Lyme, COVID, Epstein-Barr, literally dozens of different infections can trip the circuit breaker. Um, you can get it from the mold toxins, but I suspect more that people, once they get this, are more susceptible to the toxins. They have the mast cell activation syndrome, any kind of severe overwhelming stress, Anything that drives the energy crisis can trip the circuit breaker. What does it feel like? Exhausted and can't sleep. Now, for those of you with long COVID, it often takes about a year for the insomnia. You may have, like, when I first had it, I had oversleeping um, for the first year, and then the insomnia kicks in. So about half of you with long COVID will find that the insomnia is not that there yet, but exhaustion, insomnia, brain fog, um, and widespread pain because low energy causes the muscles to get stuck in a shortened position and hurt. Yeah, so I'm sure there's a lot of listeners, whether you're a patient out there or you're a physician, I have a lot of physician listeners and you see all these patients coming in. So what is your map of this and how would uh, a patient or a practitioner approach these kinds of conditions? So think about an energy crisis that trips a circuit breaker. You want to get rid of, if, if you have too many space heaters plugged in on a winter's day, first thing, and you trip the circuit breaker. If you just turn the circuit breaker back on, you're going to blow the circuits again. Uh, so you get rid of the things that are draining the energy. You unplug the excess stress, excess space heaters, treat the underlying infections, like if you have Lyme, things like that. You treat those things. To turn the circuit breaker back on, our randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled published research has shown that the SHINE protocol treats sleep, hormones, this is the entire hormone system, is pitty much controlled by the hypothalamic pituitary circuit, treat the infections, um, treat nutritional support, and exercise is stable. Not too much exercise, you'll be bedridden for a couple of days and get the post-exertional malaise, but enough to prevent deconditioning. People are afraid to do any. And there's this kind of fine line in between is where you just go for a walk if you can. Many of you are bedridden. That's very treatable too. And part of the H is uh, what I call hypotension or POTS, orthostatic intolerance, that you stand up, gravity sends all the blood to your legs. This controls sending the blood back to your brain. That's not working. Um, so we'll talk about, and there's free information sheets. For, I know they call me Rambling Jack is my college nickname, and I know I rattle off a lot of stuff. You can email me at fatigue doc, T-O-C, F-A-T-I-G-U-E, T-O-C at gmail.com. Just ask for the fibro or long COVID information sheets. They're free. If you're a practitioner, let me know and I'll send you the one for practitioners. Um, but there'll be a, for the hypotension, there are two simple tests you can do at home that will tell if you have POTS. They're easy. You don't need a $2,000 toll table test. There's a simple questionnaire and a blood pressure screen, uh, pulse screen, uh, and then how to make it go away. It's not hard. You just have to know it's there. So this is all that organized approach will take care of restoring energy production, turn the circuit breaker back on, help the muscles relax so the pain goes away, and even the secondary nerve pain that comes from chronic pain, blah, 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 blah. It's all in there. This organized SHINE protocol will get you well. Perfect. So I love the acronym, Effective Med School, right? It's all about acronyms, mm -hmm. but it keeps it in memory. And it's so uh, concise. And what's interesting is this protocol for you has been around well before COVID and long COVID. Like you've known how to treat this. You've taught doctors, you've taught patients, you've treated patients successfully. And like I said, it's so interesting because yes, it's affected more people. Um, maybe severity is slightly worse with long COVID, but it's really nothing new under the sun, right? This protocol still works. For this it's one more infection that's tripping a circuit breaker. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, 
people are getting blown off. We had thought COVID being, you know, the big ticket item, everybody, oh, we well, got COVID. But people with long COVID are now finding the same thing. They're going to the doctors and the doctors are implying there's nothing. I don't know what's wrong with you. So you're crazy. That is unacceptable. That's mm-hmm. called being abusive. If the doctor says, I'm sorry, I don't know what's wrong with you. That's honest. If the doctor implies to you and your family, I don't know what's wrong with you. So you're crazy. I recommend you get up, walk over to them. Give me a kiss on top of the head and say, thank you so much for letting me know what a complete and utter asshole you are and how abusive you are. Turn around, walk out, slam the door real hard and say, you should call the police. This guy is an abusive monster and walk out the door because it is totally unacceptable. Yeah. That they did the same thing with multiple sclerosis, with lupus. They called it, you know, hysterical paralysis. They, lupus was a neuroses. Yeah. This is no longer okay to do this. I couldn't agree more. And again, as it's affecting more, and more people, and part of the trauma is when you are suffering, you know something's not wrong, right? And you go to your doctor and they say they they invalidate all the things that you're feeling. And we start to in that way, we're also even losing in touch with our intuition and our sense of self that's telling us something's not right here. Let's move to pops dysautonomia is become much more awareness around it because with long COVID, we've seen it, even though you and I again have seen this for decades. Talk, talk specifically about POTS dysautonomia, because that's, I think, such a core of unexplained fatigue. There's many things, but this whole specific, mm-hmm. our hydraulic pump, getting pressure to the brain is such a key. Talk just a little bit about that. Well, think about it. To be an upright species, we had to develop the ability. We're a big bag of water, and gravity is going to send it from our top of our body down to our ankles. Think about that. It's just normal. To become an upright species... We had to develop what's called the autonomic nervous system that sends that blood back to the brain and heart and the rest of the system. And that's it's so critical that it's part of that key circuit breaker called the hypothalamus. It controls blood and blood pressure and blood flow. So that is that circuit is turned off by this disease. It goes into hibernation mode. So you stand up, the blood goes to your legs, and you may get a little dizzy in the beginning. But more commonly, after 5, 10, 15 minutes of being up, maybe even 45 minutes, you get brain foggy, you get exhausted, and you just see the effects of not enough blood flow, and that triggers pain and the rest. So traditionally, people, doctors are taught to do a tilt table test. As I mentioned earlier, one, it makes people feel horrible. Two, it's not especially reliable. And three, it's 2000 bucks, which your insurance will give you grief get paying for. Um, Mayo Clinic Journal had a very nice study comparing a simple questionnaire that takes two minutes um, to the uh, tilt table test and this what's called sensitivity and specificity that it was as reliable. Um, there's another 10 minute pulse test. Um, and again, if you just email me at fatigue.doc at gmail.com, ask for the information, the pots and whatever. And both of those tests are how to do them at home or in their practice. Easy, easy, easy. And then it's a list of how you treat it. One, compression stockings, yeah. not rocket science. You get 20 to 30 millimeter or medium pressure compression stockings. The higher the up they go, the better. You'll see a big difference. Increase your salt and water intake. You salt restrict somebody with this disease, they will crash and burn. They need a lot of salt. And then there's countless other simple things you can do. There are medications, natural things. It's just all listed out. Perfect. No, that's great. That's a real practical because I think more, more and more people are aware of mast cell and POTS dysautonomia, whereas it wasn't in the conversation before. So take us through the SHINE protocol. You give it us an overview, but what does it actually look like in practice? Okay. And let me, since you mentioned mast cell activation, for those of you who have a lot of sensitivities, uh, if you email me, ask for the sensitivity information sheet or the MCAS sheet, and I'll throw that in as one of the attachments. Um, those of you who have severe anxiety, hyperness, and sensitivities to everything, certainly when all else fails, you want to look at the mold issues. Um, so, but then the shine protocol, number one, sleep. S is for sleep. The circuit breaker that controls sleep isn't working. So you have trouble falling asleep. Staying asleep, you know, you have that two o'clock wake up call that wakes you all up. Um, you have trouble going and staying in deep sleep. The stage is what's called N3 deep sleep, so you stay in light sleep. So, you need treatments to sleep. The melatonin, there's a wonderful EP 120 sustained release 10 milligram melatonin. I take that myself each night, and an herbal mix called the Revitalizing Sleep Formula, a mix of six herbs. Um, these, you can get them on my website, but anywhere Amazon will have these. These are commonly available. I, I prefer, I don't 
private label much stuff. I want people to be able to get like anywhere, anything you buy on Amazon besides the smart energy system and the ribos. I don't make a penny on so if you think, well, he's just selling stuff. But I'll get that son of a bitch. I'm gonna buy all the stuff on Amazon. He won't make a penny. Yes, yes, just use it. Get yourself butter. Don't worry about it. If you want to support me, you can go to the nfatigue.com website. But the revitalizing sleep formula uh, mix of six herbs, wonderful place to start for medications, falling asleep. This is distinguished from staying asleep. Uh, the medications, Ambien, one of the best. And I know people have, oh my God, Ambien, or sleep drive and the rest. Some people, everything can affect anybody in different ways. And if you don't tolerate it, you don't tolerate it. But it can be very, very helpful uh, taking a little bit at bedtime and sometimes a little nip under the tongue uh, in the middle of the night, you crush it between your front teeth, stick it under your tongue with just two milligrams, put you back to sleep. Um, trazodone, flexural, gabapentin, low dose. There's countless different herbals. Uh, there's a mix of essential oils called terrific ZZZZ. There are many, many natural over-the-counter and then prescription items that can get you sleeping like a kitten. So that's the S. Let's go H. H again would be hormones. Um, and most of you are going to find you get irritable when hungry, which is low blood sugar, which is low adrenal even though the tests are normal. Let me talk a moment about testing. You know how you go to the doctor, the doctor says, well, the tests are normal. And ask the doctor, well, what is normal, man? Well, I guess that means there's no problem, right? Okay, what most doctors have no idea of, most doctors would rather you stay home, just send the test, and they don't have to listen to you, go blah, 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 they just want to look at the test. Um, and I wondered where the normal range come from. First of all, when I was in my second year of medicine, uh, 1980, opened my own practice. And I was, I had the habit of, I would get a general chemistry and a cholesterol panel on each, back when I thought cholesterol was important, on each new patient. Uh -huh. And what I found is both panels had a cholesterol level done at the same lab, and we two national labs. Um, and the cholesterol levels routinely were 20 to 80 points different on the two panels, same tube of blood, same person. Wow. So I took the next 20 people, noted that to the lab, and this was the national lab. So it wasn't just one local lab because people were coming to me from all over the world. Yeah. And I said, you've got this problem. And they fixed it immediately. You know how? From that day on, they suppressed one of the two cholesterol results. Wow. From the two panels. So again, we like things in black and white, but what does normal mean? Normal is called two standard deviation, blah, blah, blah. It means you take 100 people and the 95 in the middle are in the normal range and the highest and lowest to an half percent are abnormal. Put it in a way it's easy to understand. If you have shoe sizes, the normal range for shoe sizes is size five to 13. So if I put you in my size 12 shoe, you know, and I put on a size eight, they're both in the normal range. The doctor will say nothing wrong with the shoe. This is obviously nonsense. So hormones, testing, it gives a little idea of where you stand relative to the average person, but it's being normal is no more likely to be proper than your doctor having a size six shoe on will fit them. Um, so how do you tell if you have deed adrenal support, irritable when hungry, if you get hangry, yeah. um, there's a increased salt, increased water, cut back sugar, your, your cravings will go away. The sugar cravings will go away with this protocol. Uh, a nice product called Adrenaplex. Wonderful. One or two each morning smooths that right out. And I will consider the very, very low dose hydrocortisone, not enough to be toxic. And in my research, it did not suppress the adrenal at that dose because we looked at that as one of the things. Um, small percent will need that, but in those who need it, they need it. So adrenal, we have that, and there's the other adrenal hormones, but that's the main thing. Thyroid, tired, achy, weight gain, cold intolerant. I don't care what your tests show. If, you're, if your free T4 is not high, which is not going to be, um, the TSH is the worst piece of caca test, almost. I can pick a couple others. Right. Uh, with the hypothalamus not working, that test is meaningless, utterly meaningless. Um, so... I will get thyroid hormone. And again, the type, dose, form, all varies from case to case. Whether you need uh, desiccated thyroid, synthroid, T3, whether you need a tiny dose, a high dose, you got to see what feels the best to you. And as long as the free T4 is not elevated, that's okay. It can be low. You get desiccated thyroid, it'll drive it low, blah, blah, blah. 
tired, achy, weight gain, cold intolerant, try thyroid. That's what I do in my practice. Um, and then testosterone, estrogen, progesterone. In a woman, especially if you're in mid 40s, uh, the blood test will not show the onset of perimenopause or estrogen progesterone deficiency until it's been low for five to 12 years. So, how do you tell if your fibro symptoms, not PMS, but fibro symptoms, brain fog, headache, insomnia, um, fatigue are worse around your menses? Mm -hmm. That says, because what's why would it be worse around the menses? Because estrogen and progesterone plummet around the menses and around ovulation for a day or two. If you have that timing, you know that you need some of the bio-identical hormone and testosterone in men and women. Uh, Professor Hillary White uh, at Dartmouth showed that even with normal testosterone levels, if you give women a low-dose testosterone, just a milligram or two, doesn't take much of the cream, um, their pain lessens. Hey, everybody. I just stopped by to let you know that my new book, Unexpected, Finding Resilience Through Functional Medicine, Science, and Faith is now available for order wherever you purchase books. In this book, I share my own journey of overcoming life-threatening illness and the tools and tips and tricks and hope and resilience I found along the way. This book includes practical advice for things like cancer and Crohn's disease and other autoimmune conditions, infections like Lyme or Epstein-Barr and mold and biotoxin-related illness. What I really hope is that as you read this book, you find transformational wisdom for health and healing. If you want to get your own copy, stop by readunexpected.com. There you can also collect your free bonuses. So grab your copy today and begin your own transformational journey through functional medicine in finding resilience. Yeah. So, and also anti-inflammatory. That's why women have autoimmune disease, disease four or five times as many as men because um, testosterone is anti-inflammatory for autoimmunity as well. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of reasons. It's funny that, you know, again, most of these immune illnesses are 75% women. Mm -hmm. And that's why these illnesses are considered crazy people, hysterical people disease. You look at the word, which is women's diseases. You look at the word hysteria, which is a medical word, to give you an idea of how doctors think, even though half the doctors are now women, the institution is male. And the word hysteria comes from hystero, Latin, which is Latin for uterus. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it gives you an idea. So, And I also want to add a little funny comment on your um, blood sugar and adrenals. Absolutely. For several years since my adrenals hadn't been functioning, I would always say, if I get cranky, I'm like a two-year-old, either give me a, a snack or a nap. And that's yes. typical adrenals, right? <laughs> Write up a little card for your honey, yeah. you know, if your boyfriend or your lover or whatever, and say, yeah. if I'm irritable, don't console me. Don't try to hug me. I'll claw your eyes out. Just feed me. <laughs> Oh, the hormones. I love that. Very simple and yet so critical. The eye infections. Okay. So we talked about hypotension part. So the mm -hmm. pot infections, the immune system, it's varies from case to case, but what ha tends to happen is it goes on overdrive. Uh, there are parts of the innate immune system that's inside the cells that will detect if there's evidence of an infection, a DNA from the infection, and it attacks the DNA that's foreign, chops it up, signals the rest of the immune system, and it, it puts on this major attack. It blows the revel, you know, do, 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 and the immune system starts like going, and that works really well for a week or three days or 10 days if you need to. But what happens when that can't shut off and the alarm bells are going off month after month after month? Your immune system goes on overdrive, and then it exhausts. Mm -hmm. And as it exhausts, you'll find that many other infections like Epstein-Barr, which we never totally get rid of, the body likes to take a couple of them and put them in jails, or like the shingles or chickenpox virus and puts them in jail. I, I suspect it's so that it can continue to train the immune system so it doesn't you know, get weakened against it over time. But these viruses do a jailbreak when the immune system goes down. We have seen long COVID research showed reactivation of Epstein-Barr virus. So number one infection if is candida or fungal overgrowth. I'm not talking about the toxicity, I'm talking about direct infection. There's no test I would give a nickel for for that. There's plenty of tests, but you don't need them. Do you have chronic nasal congestion 
or sinusitis if it's more severe, or do you get irritable bowel syndrome, gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation? If I see either of those in somebody with these conditions, I will treat for candida. I will give a good probiotic. Um, I will give a mix of natural antifungals. I will go with the Diflucan medication, 200 milligrams a day for six weeks or longer if needed. There's a prescription compound of sinusitis nose spray. It takes aggressive but treatment, but it really can knock out the candida. Uh, the mold toxin is a secondary thing if that persists in this. That's a whole nother area uh, that needs to be treated in some cases too. So candida, number one, that most of uh, the doctors listening know about the post-Lyme. I do not consider the testing out there reliable for Lyme disease. The standard lab testing, everybody is negative, even if they have lowered Lyme. And the holistic labs, I, don't, I think I saw two people that were negative over 25 years yeah. or the entire infection panel. So I'm going to treat based on symptoms. To, was the onset after an infection, a viral-like infection? I'm going to go with the antivirals, Fanvir and Celebrex, which is an antiviral, oddly enough. That combination can be very helpful. Um, there's different inf viral infections. But again, the antibiotics, if I suspect Lyme disease, if the person has chronic lung congestion, if they have scalp sores for some reason, that seems to reflect an antibiotic sensitive or if they come in and they say, well, you know, I've been near bed bound for 25 years. I, I had dental work once and the doctor gave me this antibiotic and I went away for two months, for two weeks. And I said, oh, wow, what happened when they kept you on it? And I said, they wouldn't. Said, what? Well, I can't give you long-term antibiotics. But if you had said, oh, I'm a teenager and I have zits, here's two years of doxycycline, no problem. You know, it just boggles the mind. So if you got better with the antibiotics, you should be on them. Okay. So. Those are an overview, and certainly there's parasites and the whole thing. But the testing is not reliable, in my opinion, for the infections. I will treat, my book will go through, if these symptoms, treat for viral. If these symptoms, treat for bacterial infections. And, you know, it's not, it doesn't have to be hard. It's just common sense when you look at it and then see how they respond. Mm. Gosh, what a great overview. And a lot of the evidence, uh, one reason why long COVID is now bringing these things up is because there's a pattern of low cortisol, which is that whole HP axis that's chronic fatigue related. There's mm -hmm. elevated B cells, which is more autoimmune inflammation. Like you said, the sentinels in the immune system, and then the T cells get exhausted. So lately I've been, I love when uh, the, the research is pointing to COVID as an immune deficiency syndrome, like right after COVID for six months or so, a lot of you are experiencing a severe depletion of the T cells. So often it's not just the COVID, it's all of these things you just got done saying in your eye of the shine particle that are popping their heads up. I think it was like whack-a-mole, right? <laughs> Where they're yes. just popping themselves up because that immune system is not robust. Yeah, we should call it post-COVID or CFS whack-a-mole disease. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because the problem is like a, a series of chain reactions. It's a, a cascade effect. Yes. where that's what makes it so hard for doctors. They are used to one system going off. When you have cascade failure, where the thyroid, the, you trip the circuit breaker, your adrenal goes down, your thyroid goes down, your sleep goes down, that triggers pain and the immune activation. They they say, well, you have more than four symptoms that don't make sense to me. You must be crazy. Right. We have to think um, outside the box. <laughs> <laughs> yes. and But once you recognize that tired, achy brain fog, can't sleep, it's like, oh, if you have exhausted and can't sleep, you've got this process. Yeah. Even if you have autoimmune or other diseases, mm -hmm. you, you got triggered a secondary fibromyalgia. And we know that most of the time toxin and infection are driving those things. So it's a big part of it. Yeah. It's a big part of it. It's it's one of the many things that can. And and the thing is, the, the fun thing is that no matter where you come into this whole process from, whether you're going from eliminating the toxins. In eliminating the infections, helping the sleep, giving the nutritional support. You don't have to get rid of all of the things. You give your body enough, it can restore its own balance, take care of the rest of the issues on its own, and you can get well. Yes. I love that you say that because whether it's a physician listening or a, a patient who's suffering, when you think about toxic load and all the thousands and thousands of chemicals and infections, it can be so overwhelming that you want to just give up. And just like you said, it's so critical whether you're a practitioner or patient to know you don't have to get every last drop out of the toxic load bucket or the infectious load bucket. You just have to diminish it enough so that you create margin because once you have margin back, the body does what it's supposed to do. And you exactly. see that so well. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it, it can handle your body is built to handle yes. toxins. 
it's just when that barrel, the rain barrel effect, as you're alluding right. to, spills over, um, that's when it gets toxic. But you give your body the nutrients it needs. Yeah, so let's talk about detox. Sign. What's the core things that people need to think about with nutrition? So one, people ask what nutrients you need, and the answer is all of them. So, but you don't need to take handfuls of pills to get them. There's a nice multivitamin called Clinical Essentials, is what I use. It's two tablets a day, really good broad support. There's a powder one, but it went out of production for a while. Uh, that'll be back in about six months. But um, the Clinical Essentials tablets, two a day, very good multivitamin. Uh, we published uh, a recent study on eggs. Most ginseng doesn't work anymore because it's, they've been doing the farm ginseng and it just doesn't have the active components. But there's one called HRG80, HRG80, red ginseng. Um, it's amazing. And I, I gave up on ginseng about 25 years ago when it started losing the potency. Um, and somebody, but try it. And I was like, nah, whatever. And I could feel, I'm pretty energy sensitive. I could feel very quickly. In fact, before the show, if you're wondering, how's, how's it going? Like Energizer Bunny. Yeah. HRG80 Red Ginseng. Wow. Mm-hmm. I take half a chewable tablet. Get the chewables because uh, sometimes you don't need very much. Right. And just half a tablet uh, is what I do. Uh, and the study was one half to two tablets a day. Energy increased 60 to 70%. Stamina went up considerably uh, there's another supplement. What I recommend for people, if people say, well, where do I start? Start with nutrition and the sleep herbals. For nutrition, clinical essentials for the multivitamin that covers most of it in a nice, simple thing. The HRG80 red ginseng, and then there's something called smart energy system. It's a mix of ribose. We have two studies that show dramatic improvements in energy. Uh, the smart energy system, we haven't published that study yet. We completed it, but it increased stamina almost 80% on average. It's quite dramatic. Um, so you do, it's a simple one drink, two capsules each morning, you know, it's a, a scoop of ribose powder. So start with clinical essentials, HRG80 residencing, smart energy system. Uh, that's one that I make. So I'll give disclosure that, that, that's the one I make. Um, everything else I don't. <laughs> so the um, the you do those three, and most of you will find within six weeks your energy is can be skyrocketing, Amazing. and you adjust to what feels best to you. So and then increase salt, mm-hmm. increase water. I know you're already drinking like a fish, but you're peeing like a racehorse. The hormone that holds on to water is low. Um, there's, well, there's the other hormones that one goes down too. Um, and cut back sugar. And again. Um, my book, The Complete Guide to Beating Sugar Addiction, from fatigue, fantastic. We'll tell you how to get rid of the sugar cravings too. Um, but that will make a big difference in the healing. Uh, chocolate is a health food. You can get sugar-free chocolates, you know, that are lilies, uh, the good chocolate. There's a bunch of ones that taste good. Um, so you'll find that, here's a funny thing I want to mention, Joe. We have this, we, we are, the United States was colonized by England. Which and they sent the Puritans out of the country. The criminals they sent to Australia. So the, the interesting people went there, and the people who said everything that feels good, God will curse you to hell. The Puritans they said you're so annoying. Get on these friggin' boats and leave, or I'll shoot you. You know and they said, but the earth's flat. We're gonna fall over the edge. And they said, boat or die. You know. So they went on the boats and son of a gun. They found you know Americas. Um, you know, and they, they discovered them. Even though there are a lot of people living here at the time, but we like we discovered them. I live in Hawaii. English like to think of, well, we discovered Hawaii. <laughs> we're people living here. Um, but anyway, um, the way we were taught in this country is everything that feels good is bad for you. And I have no idea what kind of insane evolution or deity would create it that everything that feels good is bad for you. No, 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 no. Most things that feel good, unless they're processed foods where they're made to fool our body, it's actually good for you. Sugar is one thing, though, that it's okay in small amounts, but it comes an addiction. Yes. But listen to your body. What leaves you feeling better? Not just right after, but three, four days later and overall. There's no one diet for everybody. See what works the best for you. And listen to your body without turn off the news. By the way, for your adrenal support, the news media, when I was your age, the mantra and advertising mantra was sex sells. You wanted to sell something. You had a handsome guy or a pretty lady next to the car or the beer and, you know, say advertise. Now it's fear and divisiveness sell. 
Yes. They're trying to scare you to death and make you hate everybody else because that keeps you watching. Right. It also makes it easier to control people. Turn it off. Mm-hmm. It's a fiction on both sides. I, I don't know why they still quote me and the media <laughs> likes me, but it's, it's turn it off. Yeah. So stressful. Well, speaking of stress, let's just bump into that real quickly because that's such a big thing. What are some key things? Uh, stress is just ubiquitous and it's only getting worse. Um, what are some of the core things that people can do for stress? Look out the window instead of the TV screen or, or Facebook or these other places. I'm going to repeat myself here. As soon as what you're watching leaves you feeling bad, there's this I Ching move, uh, I Ching move. Breathe. Center. Reach for the remote control and click off. Yes. <laughs> okay. um, because most of what we stress about is not real. Yeah. Okay. We worry we're not going to be able to pay the rent. You know, I've been there, done that. There's homeless. I made it. Most of you with disease are not going to be homeless. And you'll have enough to and resources to get basic needs met. But 99% of what we worry about never happens. And when the 1% of the time it does happen, we manage, we do it. So as soon as you're feeling, you're thinking about something that feels bad, shift your thoughts to something that feels good. Two seconds later, when you find yourself back on the worry again, shift your thoughts to something that feels good. Have, have something like whether it's grandkids or whether it's, you know, I feel like sports. I'm not a, I'm a geek, I'm not into sports, but, you know, whatever it is that you enjoy, have a couple of things you can constantly shift your thoughts to that feel good, that don't have this mix of energies. And just, you'll find it's a habit that as you do that, whether it's music, you know, the research shows that listening to music is as effective for pain relief as most medications. So anything that distracts you from this worry allows you to heal. If you feel bad about something, you have a false belief around it. I'm going to give you this challenging thing that I found. And that if I look at and then see, you know, my belief was that, you know, being homeless and having to drop out of med school was bad. It was tend to be an amazing blessing. Everything I found in my life has come back in retrospect. I mean, if you told me when I was homeless, sleeping on a park bench, that, well, God is blessing your son. I'm going to, you know, yeah. right. You know, uh, out of my face, got a crazy right. person. Um, but 70 years later, yeah. this is what I'm finding in my life is that it all turns out to be a gift. Um, and, you know, just keep shifting your thoughts to what, to what feel good. Keep shifting and start to disconnect from those things that don't. And you're going to find it really healing. Yeah. And you mentioned grandkids, pets, all those things, love and gratitude. The science shows that it shifts our heart and our mind and our bodies into a coherent state. So Mm -hmm. if you have any wonders about what that might be, think about what you're grateful for and who you love. And those are good places to start. Um, The last part of your shine is E. Give us the, the tail end of this here on the E part. So here's the thing that we're, we're afraid to exercise because people get post-exertional malaise. And normally if you exercise, your body says, oh, we need to put more energy stores called glycogen in the muscles and build them up. So because they're, they're using more. Um, and But in this disease, it's an energy crisis. You can only make so much energy. So when you get above that energy budget that you have, instead of conditioning, you crash. And then there's called post-exertion malaise to find yourself in bed. Deep, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so, you know, people get afraid to do anything and then they decondition, which really makes the pots bad. So um, you want to do enough to maintain the conditioning, even if it's see how many steps a day you can walk or, you know, a little pedometer or five minutes. See what's comfortable and work your way up to that. Um, and then leave it there. After about 10 to 12 weeks on this protocol, energy levels will skyrocket. Then you can start to comfortably increase your exercise more and more. Um, for those of you with severe POTS, the POTS information sheet, you know, just like say, just ask me for the, if you have fibro automatic, or long COVID, just say that and I'll automatically send you those, including the POTS. It will have how you can exercise in a recumbent bicycle where you don't get the standing up POTS problem with exercise so you can recondition there's all kinds of things to do with that just start with mild walking um, and then work your way up see what feels good to you again if you feel good tired after and better the next day yes (laughs) if you feel bedridden the next day too much cut back 
Yeah. No, great advice. I so often talk to people who are, and especially I, I as a woman in my forties, I remember when all of a sudden I realized that my high intensity with my adrenals where they were was not a good idea, was actually driving things in the wrong direction. And I always joke when I really stopped the classical exercising, I got in better shape and better felt better than I did before. So there is, and this, when I was in my twenties, it was fine, but it wasn't okay in my forties with my different hormones and adrenals. So it really is important to see stage of life. How do you feel? And there's no one size fits all is what you're saying as well. It's just Listen to your body, see what works for you. What uh, feels good and what works. Awesome. Those two are great navigation systems. The news media and experts, not so much. Right, exactly. Stay away from them. Um, so last little bit here, I want to make sure that you can tell, repeat your email and tell people where they can find you. But before we do, what one bit of advice would you give to that person out there who's listening to the podcast and they're in bed or they've just been sick and they're maybe feeling a little hopeless or feeling a little discouraged? What last bit would you This give? is treatable. Our research showed 91% of people improved. I don't care if they've been bedridden for 20 years. The circuit breaker has been clicked off for 20 years in a house and eight electricians not knowing that there is a circuit breaker coming and say, everything's fine. The light switches all are okay. You know, if an electrician who knows about circuit breakers comes into the house 20 years later, turns that circuit breaker back on, the lights all work just fine and everything goes on. In my studies, it did not matter how long you had the illness in terms of being able to recover. Um, you can get well. But one message I want to leave you with is if you get well, if you can go back to what made you sick in the first place, your body will find another way to take you out of the game. As you get well, you've learned from the illness all these things that you don't have to do. You thought you had to do, but police haven't arrested you and you haven't been thrown into the streets for not doing them yet. Let them go when you get better. Use your energy for things that feel good. Follow your bliss and your body will support your health. Oh, I love that last bit because I look back at I had cancer at 25 and Crohn's at 26 and lots of illness in med school. And I was an energetic, sensitive person like you. And what was happening was I was pushing, overriding my body. My body's saying, Jill, this is too much. The pace that you're going at, the, the rigor, the lack of sleep, all the things we just talked about is too much. And guess what? I ignored it. And so my body's like, hello, we're going to give you cancer. And metaphorically, that wasn't a wake up call. Now I look back and again, a gift like your gift on the park bench. But I just want to encourage you listening as well. If you are struggling with your health, usually your body is trying to give you a message and it feels really difficult to listen, but there's a beauty in that. Like you said, at your title bomb, you, there's this piece here that's saying, let's live in a more simple way. Let's live in a way that brings us joy and not s stress and pressure. And often those things are catalyst. And later on, you can see how they've transformed your life. But when you're in the middle of it, it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So, um, wow. Thank you for, thank you for all your work, all your decades of work, all, um, all of how you've taken your own journey and turned it into, uh, for, from fatigue to fantastic, literally, and how you've transformed the lives of so many and continue to teach. We are all so grateful for you, for your knowledge, for your kindness, for your empathy and your wisdom. Um, give us your email again and website so that people can find you or reach out to get your resources. Oh, well, thank you. And I, I'm going to say there's been no sacrifice in what I'm doing. This is all a labor of love. Uh, so those of you, so many of you have said that, well, when I get better, I'm going to go out and teach everybody. And, no. When you get better, most of you get on with your life, forget you ever had the disease, because you're going to get trolls out there. You got better, then you weren't really sick. I mean, it just, just get better, get on with your yeah. life. For those of you who really have a passion, like I did, go and help. Um, for those who want more information, um, if you want to write down my email address, it's fatigue, F-A-T-I-G-U-E, D-O-C, like Dr. Fatigue, doc at gmail.com. And just ask for the fiber information, sheets, or CFS, or long COVID, whatever. Um, if you want the mass cell activation seats, you can ask for that too. Um, but the let me know if you have the disease or if you're a practitioner, because... There's different information geared to both, so I can send you either. Um, my website for supplements to optimize energy would be the endfatigue.com. So E, and like Nancy, D, fatigue.com. Everything I mentioned except the smart energy system is available on Amazon. Also, um, the there's another website, vitality101.com. Uh, there's a energy, uh, there's a, a, actually, a computerized doctor type program. I hold a patent for a computerized physician in the United States um, that we developed for people with fibromyalgia because not everybody can afford to see a doctor. Um, so it's called energyanalysisprogram.com. 
uh, we used to charge for it, but people have all go back to said I'm on Medicaid, I'm devastated, I can't. So we just, my wife and I just made a fee to everybody. Um, it will analyze the symptoms, pertinent lab tests, and tell you what's draining your energy and how to optimize energy production. So what we're doing is this is like a game. You know, picture this: you're you're homeless, you have this disease, you get better, and now you will figure, well, let me help everybody else get better. Uh, and you're in a system that does not support that. Um, unless it's an expensive medicine. If this, if my research had been on an expensive, patentable medication, I could buy an island in Hawaii and, the, you know, all the doctors know about it. But if it's cheap, the system really, uh, let's just say, heavily discourages anything that's not patentable and expensive. Mm -hmm. um, so the game is how do you get the information out to everybody? Uh, and that's my passion. It's my fun. So oh. you can get well. Um, to use your energy to follow your bliss as you do. And, you 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 can be fine, and you really can. Just find doctors who know how to help, and the book and the other things. If you can't afford a doctor, it'll show you. It'll tell you how to go through and get well. Thank so you have, for pouring. Have fun with it. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your work. Thank you for pouring your generosity and wisdom into the world. And I know everybody listening today is grateful. Thanks again for coming on. Make me blush. You're welcome. Aloha, <laughs> guys.